What is going on, everyone? We are back with an upload. I know that's surprising because I've been just streaming a whole bunch lately. Streaming's been a lot of fun. If you haven't checked out the streams, you got to come check them out. We've been having a blast. And today, this what I'm showing you now was taken from earlier today for the Final Shape reveal. I will be making more scripted uploads coming up soon, maybe a whisper guide, onslaught guide, how it all works, that sort of thing. But for now, we're just going to start with my reaction to the Final Shape gameplay reveal. So enjoy. I will see you in the Discord or the next video or the next live stream. Yada yada. All right. See ya. Bye. Here we go, guys. Set. Let's out. Hey, everyone. This is Luke from the Destiny team. Luke Smith. The final shape is the culmination of a 10 year journey. A journey that began on the Cosmodrome, took you to the moon, Venus, Mars, the reef, and beyond. It's a journey that'll end inside the Traveler with you facing the Witness. But facing the Witness is not the end of Destiny 2. And it's definitely not the end of Destiny. Reconfirming that. After you thing. face the Witness, okay. no Destiny 3. we're going to tell you what's coming next to Destiny 2 and beyond. We'll see you soon. Okay, we like this. Destiny 3 people are going to be upset, though. The Final Shape has been an amazing project to work on. The amount of creativity, the amount of design work, the amount of all these elements coming together has been inspirational. I was like, are you guys, are you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? It looks awesome. I think that we're gonna have a pretty big impact and it's gonna shake things up a lot. And we just wanted to give you a glimpse of what we're working on. What's that pink bar underneath? You guys see that? Underneath the super bar? Whoa, three subclasses. Mixed matched abilities? Very grainy for me, by the way, guys. I, I know it's really pretty grainy. What is that? What? We are going into the pale heart of the Traveler, and the Traveler has chosen you, the Guardian, to be its champion. It's empowering us with gifts that we've never really had before. One of the concept artists early on created this very evocative image of a Guardian with light armor and dark armor. We're like, we really need this in the final shape. This is the ultimate form of being a Guardian, to wield light and darkness at the same time. We built Prismatic exactly to be that. Prismatic. Prismatic is the new subclass in the final shape where you can combine certain what? class abilities from different damage types together. Getting light and dark and mastering it. No one's done that before. Like the witness is manipulating the energies like this, but the witness is not a master of light and dark. No red subclass. The guardian is player. Prismatic. Are. In Prismatic, underneath your super bar, there's a light meter and a dark meter. As you deal damage with either light damage or dark damage, it fills the respective sides of the meter. Once both sides are full, you get this new level of power that we're calling Transcendence. I love Transcendence because you do these cool motions. For Warlocks, we have this cool, like, mystic pose. Hunters are going to do this cool, like... The Titan one where you just go... While you're transcendent, you get a new, unique grenade that combines both light and dark together. The hunters get this fire and ice combo. Titans, Strand, and Arc. For the Warlock, Stasis, and Void together. You have a weapon damage bonus that stacks on top of other weapon damage bonuses. Your grenade and melee are both instantly refunded when you cast Transcendence, so you can loop them together, one after the other. That's really exciting. That is so good. <laughs> We're kind of thinking about Prismatic as this advanced subclass where you have more build crafting options, more potential combinations, 
more fragments than you normally get, more fragment slots to socket them than you normally get. That is a lot of combinations. 2,300, no, I'm just kidding. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just the art director. I think that prismatic feels like you are doing combinations you shouldn't be able to do. It feels a little game breaking, I'm not gonna lie. A, a little, a little bit? You gotta have it that way for new subclass. Whoa. You're gonna be like, oh no, what have I done? I'm gonna be here all night. I wish the bitrate was better. It's so grainy for me. I have it on 1080. It's not just about the mastery of light and dark. It's not just about using multipliers at the same time. It's about figuring out how they work in concert in really interesting ways. We're transcending kind of the, the bounds of light and darkness. There's all these subclasses that really resonate with people. And now you can finally combine those and make your own guardian feel very uniquely you. This like really opens up the doors for unexpected, like really wild stuff. I love um, being a hunter and having gunpowder gamble and blowing them up. And then we're like, oh, wait, 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 what if you could slow enemies, you could throw out, you know, your shurikens, and then you blow them up as well. And it's like, okay, I didn't think I could ever do those two things at the same time. And you're telling me I can do as much as I want? You can throw a withering blade melee and like bounce it between a bunch of people and get like three kills from one melee and now your gunpowder gamble's like fully charged, right? And so like certain interactions I think get a lot easier <laughs> just because we've sort of made the aspects a little bit, a little bit more permissive, a little bit, a little bit looser. I think when we play test, I'm probably gonna be running probably Warlock with um, this, the Lightning Surge build where you have Arcane Needle for three melee charges, and then you combine that with Lightning Surge. You can throw Bleak Watcher on top of that for just like a little extra crowd control, or you can throw Devour. And so you're, you know, jumping in, Lightning Surging, that's killing a bunch of stuff. You're activating Devour. That gives you infinite sustain effectively to stay in the fight. As a Titan, you can just quickly start using your arc abilities to jolt all the enemies around you oh, and then kind of finish them off with music. like the cool blades of Strand. And it's so satisfying to see how fast you move. It's a very like fun, destructive build that you can just like destroy everything around you. And it, it, it's super fun. There was this moment for me where I was like, wait a minute, I could send out Threadlings and have a Bleak Watcher. It just creates these moments of escalation within the combat, and I think that's really exciting for me. If you combine Bleak Watcher and Feed the Void, you consume your grenade to throw your Bleak Watcher out there, and so it's you know locking stuff down with stasis, doing crowd control. You can clean that stuff up pretty easily with you know, an Arcane Needle melee, which has three charges. Those ability kills will activate Devour, which gives you more grenade energy every time Devour activates, so it lets you loop your Bleak Watcher. And so you can have like multiple Bleak Watchers out in the field, freezing stuff everywhere. You're just like launching your cool strand melees out and everything's dying and it's great. <laughs> there we go. Embracing the challenge of like, how do we make stuff that wasn't initially intended to like work together in the same build? Like, how do we twist them and warp them and push and pull this and that to make them work together? I'm excited about, you know, seeing uh, all the players like talk about their favorite combinations. I'm just looking forward to all the, the videos that people make of their own custom builds with their own exotics that they're pairing it up with to create like this, these amazing builds. It feels infinite to me. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. How about this music though? This is like end game level epic, epic music. I can't wait to watch this again when I can actually see it. It's so grainy. Look 
look at all the the buffs on the left side. I'm pretty sure I saw five at one point. In the final shape, we're going to be making these new exotic class items. Oh yes, back in D1. These new exotic class items allow you to steal perks from other exotics and combine two perks oh, together into my. one single exotic. What? The perks that come on them are actually random rolled. One thing that is going to be fun is to chase these perks and then find different combinations that work Dude. really well. Oh my gosh. These new class items are all about <laughs> prismatic and that making is. that feel good. Uh. So it's going to be all about enhancing your builds and your combination of light and darkness and achieving transcendence and what transcendence does. They also look so good. With these class oh. items, we wanted them to stand out as special. They have these two perk columns that take aspects from other exotics. There's no reason to have a exotic class, class items, items are going to let you do things that other classes consider their own, but now they're yours. I managed to get for my slow them down, blow them up hunter build a roll on the exotic cloak that made it so powered melee kills caused enemies to ignite. And also, I could get an extra dodge charge, so I could do an extra slow charge on enemies at the same time. We wanted it to feel a little broken. It definitely felt like I had two exotics on my cloak, which is kind of the intention. We want that to feel like you're bending the rules a bit. It just opens up the space it said for mix and matching in a way up. that I think is going to just be fun to see what combinations people There's no reason find to use and like and what becomes the meta. Like, you have all the subclass abilities in one subclass. They look no amazing. They have visual effects that activate when you are transcendent. It just really ties into this overall theme. But on top of that, the gameplay with basically stealing exotic traits from other exotics and even from classes that aren't you adds this element of spice to them and the fact that it's random rolls, you're going to want to keep looking for the right one for your builds. We're not showing too many new weapons. These are all from this year, by Paul. It might be Crusher. Oh. The Dread are this new witness faction. The Dread. Oh, snap. When you see these new characters, not only do they look unique and new, but you see like a through line that we've been building through the years that connects it all together. Oh. And you've seen a member of the Dread before. You might remember seeing the Tormentor make a big appearance last year. Well, that was just the first one. You have like this slate of new enemies with like the Tormentor and the we Subjugators so and bad. the Weaver and the Attendant and the Grim and the Husk. This is like the embodiment of the witness in these new enemies. The Grim is probably one of my favorite new enemies that we have in Destiny. I think it's a poster child of the Dread in some ways. It's this bat with a gun. The gun bat, yes, exactly. <laughs> it does a scream and it swoops all around the battlefield. It's a profile we've never seen in Destiny. You are facing now the first flying character with actual wings. They wow. can screech, and if that hits you, it suppresses your abilities. It oh. also slows you down. 
it was something that immediately appealed to the team and made us think, we have to do this. We have to make this character. The husk is this melee bruiser who has these it's incredibly like dangerous bullet. looking blades and they're going to do these cool acrobatic attacks. Uh, maybe acolytes. They hurt. They have two of these very sharp melee weapons and they just come charging with those things and will just slice and dice. They are really dangerous, especially in groups. If you manage to kill the husk, you have to be careful because if you kill it the wrong way, what's inside of the husk? The geist is going to pop out and it's going to seek you out. Oh, the geist dang. has killed me more than I care to admit. Now I'm like looking everywhere every time I go into a fight and I'm like, is there a husk somewhere? Is there a husk somewhere? Because I'm targeting that first. <laughs> The Weaver and the Attendant are our strand and stasis scions that have been reshaped by the Witness. We wanted to show like the influence of darkness powers on these characters. They have a stasis ability that can shoot at you that will freeze you. They have a strand ability that will pull you across the battlefield. The fact that you can get suspended and frozen in place just adds a big new dynamic to the fight. The Weaver does something we've never done before. It'll shoot out this complete, powerful strand wave. If that thing hits you, it's almost like a rubber band. It like pulls I back that. and like snaps and like pulls you towards that you character. Aspect? As one character doing that to you, yeah, you can handle it. As soon as there's multiple characters trying to pull you in different directions towards you, you have to approach it in a different way. excited about everything that we've been doing for the final shape. It just feels like there's a really cool through line through all of this. It's the culmination of the Guardian's journey over the last 10 years. We wanted to deliver something that's really like fun and exciting and engaging for players. It is amazing to see this initial inspiration carried all the way through to become a reality in the final shape. into the Traveler to turn their threat into our annihilation. Something's changed in the Guardian. New power. I can feel it. Here we go.